Wow, this chapter had a lot of shirtless modena, and I'm not gonna lie and say I didn't enjoy it. Just like I'm not going to lie and say I don't enjoy it anytime Thor takes his shirt off in the movies, which he always finds an excuse to do. That's just okay with me. So just on that alone, thank you Kishimoto for this chapter. This chapter though did have a lot of interesting content. And there are basically three main parts. And this is just what I love about Madara's character. I know I've harped on this for like the past forever, <laughs> pretty much. Is that Madara's character brings interest to the story builds up the momentum. Anytime he is involved, the story gets better. And this chapter is just another example of that. The first important part of this chapter is the interaction between Madara and Hashirama. Of course we know Madara loses his shirt <laughs> because Sasuke tries to burn it off, but it is ineffective because Marada has the Renengan, though his Renengan disappears when he becomes a real person because basically his eyes are somewhere else. So that's an important setup for the rest of this chapter is to remember Marada does not have his eyes right now because Obito has one of his real eyes and we don't know where his other eye is. What was that? His, it would be his left right eye. We don't know where this eye is at. It's wherever Obito left it. But maybe Black Zetsu has it. Anyway, that's kind of the setup for Hashirama and Madara's encounter. Now that Madara's shirt is conveniently off, we see his Hashi boob, and that plays an important part in the rest of the chapter. So what Madara says though to start this interaction is very interesting because he says, Hashirama, do you remember that time I spoke to you when we when I took you before the Uchiha clan tablet? and told you that what it said was basically when the two opposing powers, say Senju and uh, Uchiha, when those two powers find balance, peace is made, but that, that there was another interpretation and that was if somebody, if an individual achieves both powers, then that person themselves will experience balance, peace, or as Madara puts it, ecstasy. And it's at this point that Madara makes another very interesting comment. Uh, more surprising, I think, is that after Hashirama says, wow, looking at my face on your chest just tells me that you were up to no good uh, after you left the village. And it's at this point that Madara admits that he did not put Hashirama's G DNA on himself in that it wasn't originally his idea. As he, this is what he says. He says, it was an acquaintance of an underling of mine that gave him the idea to use Hashirama cells, that that was even an option. And the first person who popped into my mind as far as being the acquaintance is Orochimaru. And this kind of makes sense because when Kabuto and Eru Tensei Madara first met up, of course, Kabuto was speaking through Mu, uh, Kabuto name-dropped Orochimaru as if he expected Madara to know who Orochimaru is or was, was at that point. So that's what makes me think this acquaintance is Orochimaru. As to who the underling of Madara was at the time, I'm not sure if it's a reference to Obito because Obito had dealings with Orochimaru, but it feels like as far as timeline that this procedure that happened, the Hashibub came about very soon after the Battle of the Valley of the End. So that kind of rules out Obito, and in this way it kind of, in my mind, opens the door for another character to be the underling. I don't know, I think it's really exciting. But Madara doesn't talk very much longer after this to Hashirama. He goes into action, and the first thing he does, remember he's blind, but by, I guess he bites his arm, which I'm not sure what the purpose of that was. It reminded me of like when you do a summoning and you bite your thumb and do that whole shebang. Uh, this is a little different, but I assumed it was a way for him to locate Hashirama. You have to remember between having a Hashiboob and 
uh, the black rods that are clearly Madara's that are sticking out of Hashirama. I think it was the combination of these two things that one, allowed him to locate Madara without vision, and two, to immobilize Hashirama. Because right after this, he goes up to Hashirama and he draws out, he absorbs uh, the sin, the, yeah, the sage mode of, yeah, simple mode of uh, Hashirama. And the markings are removed from his eyes and go to his Hashibub, Madara's Hashibub. So this just demonstrates, he absorbed, of course, the Amaterasu, but all this absorbing of chakra just demonstrates that even though Madara doesn't have his eyes, uh, the very fact that he awakened the Ren and Gan means he still has the ability to absorb things. So Madara basically gets a power up in this way, and it's interesting that he's not impressed with the power that Sage Mode gives him. But it is useful because now he can sense anybody coming towards him with Sage Mode. So eyes are not really a factor anymore. And maybe he doesn't even need Sage Mode to be able to sense his way around because he to totally like bowled everybody over on his way to Hashirama. So I, I don't know. <laughs> the second part of this chapter is the interesting interaction between Madara and Sasuke. Of course Sasuke which I have to give Sasuke credit for this. He is the one who's not sitting around. He's actually being aggressive and trying to attack Madara, the enemy, while everyone stands around. That's what he did for o like when Obito seemed to be down and out. I, I like this about Sasuke. He's not sitting around. Sasuke continues his attack, but this time with his sword as... Uh, ninjutsu clearly is not effective against Madara, he just absorbs it. And I thought it was so boss the way that Madara took control of the situation. He jumped back, but then he allowed Sasuke's sword to go through his bicep, and in that way he gained control of Sasuke's sword and pulled Sasuke towards him to talk to him and immobilize him in this way. It was very clever, and in some ways I think Madara is enjoying feeling pain because it means he's alive. It reaffirms the fact that he is revived once again. And now that Sasuke is closer to him, I assume he uses Sage Mode to sense Sasuke's eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Um, but he notes, he can tell what kind of Sharingan Sasuke has. And I think that's very interesting because it speaks to the nature of Sharingan having archetype patterns uh, where before that was never really clear it just seemed like there was always a unique pattern but here Madara can recognize a pattern so obviously Madara would know about this kind of stuff so but I thought that was a nice insight into this dojutsu ability and Madara like threatens to take Sasuke's eyes until he can get his Venengan back which as I said, I'm assuming literally get his physical eyes back. And towards the end of the chapter, Madara offers an allegiance with Sasuke. They are the last... Well, Obito's out the door pretty much. But so they will be the last living Uchiha, and Madara's like, why don't you join me? But clearly it doesn't matter either way because everyone in Madara's eyes is on borrowed time, basically. And, but I thought it was nice that this question finally got brought up because a lot of theorists, Naruto theorists, were wondering if Sasuke would join with Madara. So I guess this answers the question. It's a no. Though it would have been really cool to see those two team up and just start kicking everyone's ass. Moving on to the third part of this chapter, that involves Obito and Black Zetsu. Uh, briefly, we switch over to that scene of Obito lying on the ground with Minato and Kakashi above him. And we see uh, Obito explaining what has happened, Madara is back. And no sooner does that happen than uh, Black Zetsu begins to speak and say, he kind of insults Obito or does like I told you so, um, saying he was useless and always trying to sneak around behind Madara's back and do the plan his own way. Um, but it's clear Black Zetsu's purpose now is to take Madara's Renengan out of Obito's eye. But before he can do this, Minato and Kakashi move in to protect Obito. And to save himself, Black Zetsu goes back, attaches himself 
basically possesses Obito once again. And in doing so, he explains that he'll keep Obito alive a little longer as long as Obito is connected to him. Much like how Madara stayed alive being connected through Hashirama to the Ghetto Mazo behind him. Um, but in this way, Obito is not going to die right away. And during this, we get a flashback. Black Zetsu gets a flashback, which I'm hoping means Madara is going to get a flashback. If Black Zetsu is getting a flashback, I mean, come on. But basically, Black Zetsu's flashback just explained how Black Zetsu got there. And it also confirmed uh, Madara's ability to communicate with Black Zetsu. Um, they were linked in their mind because Black Zetsu, of course, is a physical manifestation of Madara's will. And what we can get from this interaction with Black Zetsu is that he plans to use Obito to fight and distract Kakashi and Minato. And for me, this kind of opens the door for Obito to resist in some fashion or get rid of Black Zetsu in some fashion. So we'll see, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on where that battle's going to go. The chapter wraps up with a scene of Madara doing his best uh, L'Oreal shampoo pose. <laughs> and he's able, well it's interesting, he absorbs the chakra of a fallen shinobi, which allows him to heal his arm where he got stabbed by Sasuke intentionally. So interesting to note that he has healing abilities like Hashirama had. Uh, to heal himself instantly and this kind of made me think I don't remember where Hashirama started and where Madara ended on his body. I know it's the chest region so I don't know if that was Hashirama DNA right there on that arm but in any case Madara has Hashirama's ability to heal and Madara ends the chapter by presenting his goal announcing his goal, I should say, and that is to recollect the Biju. Obviously, in an effort to get the Jubi back in one piece and become the Jinjuriki of the Jubi. So that's how the chapter ends. Like I said, I enjoyed all the shirtless Madara, but this chapter had a lot of substance in it as well. I'm curious to see what Hashidama is going to do now because he looked like his Edo Tensei form was weakened, it was crumbling, it was falling apart, but at the same time he was saying Madara's going to regret ever abandoning his Edo Tensei form and becoming a living person, thus being able to die once more. So curious to see where that's going to lead, but overall I thought this was an excellent chapter like last week. As I've been saying, once Madara gets on the scene, shit starts to happen. Thank you! But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this chapter and what your theories are of who Madara's underling is. Is it someone besides Zetsu and Obito, someone from before? I don't know, I'm very curious about this now. Um, yeah, and just let me know your thoughts on this chapter and what's gonna happen now. Uh, how's it all gonna play out? And uh, you know, leave your comments below. I always appreciate, I do read them, even though I'm really slow at responding to them because I'm usually on my phone. But I appreciate your guys' ideas, and if you like this review, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys later this week for the anime review. Alright, bye!